you really need to get into the mindset of expecting that we are going to have trials. Unfortunately, many of us have gotten into the bad habit of thinking that the goal of life is to get along without any difficulties or obstacles. But we need to ditch that kind of thinking because it is immature and is not biblical either. Was there ever a time in your life when you felt as if your faith was being tested by this world, either through temptations or persecution or whatnot? Do you ever question God as to why these things are happening? I'll tell you, the Jewish believers uh, in James 1 dealt with this kind of problem. I will go ahead and uh, read uh, James 1, verses 2 through 4, which says, My brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In verse 1, James begins with a salutation. He calls himself a servant of God. This was not to put himself in a place of authority over the Jewish believers he was writing to, but that so he could relate to them as fellow Christ followers. He was a fellow servant of God, and he wanted them to know that. James knew that the audience he was writing to was struggling with afflictions and started, with a letter, uh, started the letter with a word of advice during these trials. Now, much like uh, any good uh, pastor, you know that a uh, sermon must have three points. So I have three points during today's sermon. Point one, be ready for trials. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. The word count here is synonymous to to think or to consider. He wants you to make sure that you see it as a privilege to go through these trials. It's not necessarily that we are to be happy or joyful because we are suffering through these trials. We are to be happy and joyful because we can learn to grow through the experiences of these trials. So uh, you might be thinking, you might also not be uh, thinking about this, but what if you think, uh, what if someone hasn't gone through these trials of faith? Then this passage wouldn't, um, it wouldn't apply to them, right? Well, I have to tell you that if you're a Christian, either you would be the first to have not gone through a trial, or it's coming, and you must prepare for it. It says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, not if. You really need to get into the mindset of expecting that we are going to have trials. Unfortunately, many of us have gotten into the bad habit of thinking that the goal of life is to get along without any difficulties or obstacles. But we need to ditch that kind of thinking because it is immature and is not biblical either. God never promised us that all would be smooth sailing. In fact, what Jesus did promise was that in this world we will have tribulations. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, think not it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing had happened to you. Don't be surprised when trials come your way. Now, I know a few of you guys uh, like football, or at least I've heard a little bit of that um, over the weekend. So I want you guys to imagine yourselves uh, in the shoes of a football coach. Now imagine it's just the beginning of practice season, uh, early August, and the initial, uh, the initial practice happens. And towards the end, one of your uh, uh, football players comes up to you, and he looks, he looks all worried. Um, and you ask him, well, hey, what's going on? He says, well, this crazy thing happened. During practice, I was tackled. (laughs) Now, that's a pretty strange illustration, um, but the idea is this football player, he should expect being tackled because he goes to football practice. Because in the real world of football, you're going to get tackled. That's just something that happens in the game. That's what you expect. Charles Spurgeon says, 
See you the thorn which grows with the rose. You cannot gather the fragrant flower without its rough companion. You cannot possess the faith without experiencing the trial, nor eat the lamb without the bitter herbs. These two things are put together, faith and trial. We must understand that in this life, we will experience hardships, trials, and temptations of the faith. It is inevitable as Christians. Getting hit is going to happen. We are going to get hurt. This world is not heaven. The sooner we realize it, the better off we'll be for it. This place is not the perfect place that we are expecting heaven to be. We must realize this. This is not your best life now. Now, we should not be surprised when we have trials on this earth. This is what is supposed to happen. It's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. Point two, be excited for trials. So if these trials are certain to happen, how should we respond to them? Some just try to grit their teeth and they just get along with it and hope for the best and just try to get back, uh, get back to normal as soon as possible. But this is not the way that Christians should approach trials. This is the way that the world would approach trials. And as many of you probably know, we are not called to be like the world. In fact, most of the time we are called to do the exact opposite of what the world would. The apostles demonstrated an attitude of joy. They rejoiced after being beaten for the preaching of uh, the name of Jesus. In Acts 5.41, they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 8 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice through now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold, though it may be tried in the fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believe. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What he's saying there is that we should also stand out because of our joy especially through trials and hardships. The guards and spectators uh, that saw through the life of Paul, Peter, um, Timothy, and Silas, as they were thrown in prison, they were rejoicing and singing praises to God because they knew that he was going to protect them and because they knew that this was going to happen. They were expecting these trials to happen. And so they responded with joy because they knew their ultimate end was going to be one greater than what they were now experiencing. In this passage, it is our Christian faith that God is testing. So this phrase refers to the process of the testing of our faith, our faith to prove its genuineness. God allows troubles in this life as a test to demonstrate our faith. The word worketh uh, here in verse 4 refers to a result that is caused or produced. In this case, patience is a result of that, brought about by testing. Patience is more than just being able to, cal uh, to wait calmly. In this passage, it refers to patient endurance. It's the steadfastness, the ability to keep going on even when you don't feel like it. Putting the words together, worketh patience, means produce patient endurance. Patience does not just come from any trial, but rather the trials of one's own faith. A Christian should have joy not just because they are going through the trials, but rather because they can learn to endure the trials. While we may not be able to, or we may not face persical, uh, physical persecution in this life, the apostles, like the apostles, we may face other trials that can strengthen our faith and endurance. Many people still struggle in today's world. I know that we have uh, sicknesses going around. You can see the snow out there. The snow itself is a sign of uh, patiently enduring through these uh, <laughs> roads. Um, I'm sure it will affect many people uh, and probably not in good ways either. So there you have an example of a trial right there. All Christians will face trials of some kind, and they should be prepared to face them head on. Much like, much like when a storm clears, after these trials, a Christian can look back 
and see how much has changed in them. And let's hope what changed in them was for the better. Point three, become mature through trials. Spiritual maturity is the process of becoming more perfect and more complete. James is not calling Christians to become perfect. He knows that perfection is impossible to reach while we still have sin with us. The idea is that Christians must work towards achieving the greatest spiritual maturity that they can have while living here in a fallen world. Spiritual maturity brings contentment, and these trials produce spiritual maturity. Trials bring to light a Christian's strengths and weaknesses. Trials can strengthen a believer if they persevere through the trials. A Christian that gives up and accepts the trials passively will not be a successful one. Everyone will face trials and difficulties in life, but how we choose to overcome the challenge is what separates the strong Christians from the weak Christians. God's goal for us here is to grow in spiritual maturity. Paul wrote in Ephesians 4.13 that the goal of our church ministry is to grow to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. God's goal is for us to grow to be like Christ in spiritual maturity. But how do we get there? Through enduring trials. Our trials are a vital part of this growth process. I'd like to uh, finish off here with an illustration uh, that hopefully uh, you can envision in your mind to help you understand um, the idea of patience and endurance through these trials. It's called the cocoon, the cocoon illustration. A man found a cocoon of a butterfly. One day a small opening appeared. He sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through that little hole. Then it seemed to stop making any progress. It appears as if it had gotten as far as it could go and couldn't go any further. Then the man decided to help the butterfly, so he took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily, but it had a swollen body and small shriveled wings. The man continued to watch the butterfly because he expected that at any moment the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body, which would contract in time. But neither happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around with a swollen body and shriveled wings. It was never able to fly. What the man in his kindness and haste did not understand was that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through the tiny opening were God's way of forcing fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved the freedom from the cocoon. So with all that, what can we learn? Without the struggle, the caterpillar would never become a butterfly. In the same way, Christians will never spiritually grow if we don't have something to push us. Trials and hardships were never meant to be easy, but they were meant to be. We go through trials as Christians because without them, we can never spiritually grow in the way that God wants us to. There's a type of peace that Christians can have while facing trials and temptations. You can rest easy knowing that you will have the great opportunity to grow in your faith and spiritual maturity. Don't be worried about the trial you face. Instead, focus on how you can grow through these trials. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I thank you for today's message. I pray that you'll be able to help all those who listened um, to uh, understand uh, what has been given to them. I pray for the rest of this day. I pray for safe travel as those who are heading back home, those who are heading back uh, to the college, that you'll be with them and provide safety uh, through these. I pray for the rest of this, uh, the rest of this season as uh, we know that there are many uh, hardships coming our way, uh, whether through uh, illness or um, even uh, death. I pray that through these trials we will be able to look at you and be able to rest easy because we know that you are with us through all these trials. I pray that you'll help us through these trials, that we will grow in spiritual maturity through all of it, that you will help us see that you will be with us the whole time. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.